I shouldn't have to tell you what this car is. I really shouldn't. But I have a feeling that most of you watching have no clue what this car is. So I have to tell you. This is a 1972 Di Tommaso Pantera, a car I believe to be the most misunderstood classic supercar of all time. <laughs> Today, I borrowed this Pantera from a friend here in Allentown, Pennsylvania to show you why I think this is the most misunderstood classic supercar of all time. But also, I want to show you why I think this is an awesome supercar. After that, I will show you some of my favorite features. Take it for a drive and point out some of the things to look for if you're planning on buying one. So, the Pantera. Is it Italian? Is it American? Is it Argentinian? It's kind of confusing. I think this is part of the reason that Pantera is so misunderstood. A Ferrari is Italian, made mostly by Italians, with mostly Italian parts and materials. A Ford GT40 is American, made mostly by Americans, with mostly American parts and materials. But the Pantera, you see, has many ingredients. And I think this makes it very special. But this begs the question, a car that is so similar to the Ford GT40, but yet, relatively unknown to the masses. Why is that? And just what is a Pantera? Well, the Pantera is considered an exotic Italian sports car. It was released for production in 1971 through 1974 and built to order until 1992. It was designed by the American-born auto designer legend Tom Yarda and manufactured in Italy. In 1971, Ford acquired an 84% stake in the Di Tommaso company. And so the Panteras were sold through their Lincoln Mercury dealerships here in the U.S. Later, in 1974, Ford sold its share back to Di Tommaso and stopped importing and selling the Pantera through its dealerships later in 1975. The Pantera, like many other Italian exotics, is a mid-engine car powered by a Ford 351 Cleveland engine, producing about 330 horsepower, and it has a 5-speed fully synchronized ZF transaxle, the same transaxle that's in the Ford GT40, the car that won the 24 Hours of Le Mans four consecutive times from 1966 to 1969. This combination propelled the Pantera to 60 miles an hour in 5.5 seconds, according to car and driver. It has a fully independent coilover suspension, rack and pinion steering, power disc brakes, power windows, and air conditioning. A pretty impressive list of features for a sports car designed in the 60s. If you would like to learn more about Panteras and other renditions, I've included links to websites in the description below. You can also learn more about Panteras by contacting or joining a local Pantera chapter like EPA or POCA. Now, let's walk around the car and take a look at the engine bay and the interior, where I will show you some of my favorite features. Then, we'll take it for a spin and show you some of the things you should look for when buying one. And now, let me take you around the back of the car, where we're gonna be talking about the exhaust, the amazing quads that this car has. Very distinctive of the period. And I just think it's just quite amazing. Take a look at all the four tips of the exhaust coming straight out of the engine back here. It's just an incredible look. Now, obviously, this is an aftermarket exhaust and it's made by Mine Train with a crossover section here in the middle. It's a fantastic sounding exhaust and you get to hear that in a moment. But this, it's one of my favorite features. And now we're moving to the trunk slash engine compartment. This is what sets this car apart from a lot of other exotics. It makes it so practical. You can easily fit enough luggage here for a getaway weekend for two people. And the best part, it's removable. But because I don't want to be fully liable, I'm gonna get the owner to help me. And now moving on to my favorite part of the car, the engine compartment. Now there's a lot going on here. So let me quickly highlight some of the things. This right here is your gas tank. And right here you have the V8, eight cylinder 351 Cleveland. 
And here we have the transaxle, and as I mentioned before, this is the same transaxle used in the Ford GT40, except this one is reversed or flipped around. And then back here, in classic Italian engineering, we have the AC condenser in the back. And now the interior, the cockpit, where the magic happens. This is another one of my favorite features because the highlights of all the functions, all the instruments are here reachable for the, for the, uh, for the driver. And then the shifter. This is the gated shifter. Now, this plate has been customized uh, by the APA group. Only a couple of pieces were made and the gates were removed. Uh, but it's, it's still a gated shifter and it's phenomenal, which I will be demonstrating shortly. Now, this is, this is an automatic, right, Rick? Yes, it is. A five-speed automatic. All right. But you have to shift. Oh, do you? Well, that, that's no fun, is it? Well, just start it in third gear and you can go to 100 miles an hour. How's that? That makes sense. I think I like that. Wow. I mean, you know, and, and the interesting part about the Cleveland is that it's, a, it's got that very unique sound, doesn't it? Absolutely. Nothing like it. Because of the torque, there's really not a whole lot of uh, you know uh, need for the gas. It just rolls. I bet. It, Idle right out in first. Yeah, gear. you could probably put this car in fourth gear and it'll start rolling, right? Yep. It's just incredible. Heavy steering, but it's precise. The shifters have it heavy as well. Power steering, everything. You got lights. You got your oil and water. A lot of commodities for 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 a car like this. and it just gets going. And the sound. Awesome. Just incredible. Considering long throw from the shifter all the way back with multiple U-joints and Absolutely. detents, it shifts quite easily. Quite easily. The pedals are, you know, off to the right as it's as typical. I mean, a lot of the Lamborghinis and Ferraris, especially, you know, Countach's of this time, have the pedals to the right, but it's, it's actually quite comfortable. That sound, I mean, you know, it's, it's very distinct. If you think about a Ford V8, it's not, it's really, it's, it's, it's got that unique sound. I don't know if that, a lot of that has to do with the exhaust that you have on. Absolutely, we can hear a Pantera coming from other cars when they're coming down the road. up front is really not a problem. I mean, I can see fine everywhere around me except the back. The back is a little challenging and um, a lot of guys have gone to very large mirrors that stick out on the side, but at one point in time I was considering putting the Camaro mirrors on and actually temporarily mounted them, but I thought it just took away from the look of the car. Right. Yeah, you definitely want to maintain that classic Uh, 
and now you're really pumped and excited to buy a Pantera. So allow me to highlight some of the things you should look for when buying one. I made a video to show you general things to look for when buying any car, like body shape, signs of wear, leaks, etc. The link is included below. Use that as your basis, but now let's dig into things to look for for this car specifically. Keep in mind that it's never a bad idea to bring a car savvy friend like myself who is familiar with these cars to help you look for things. If you find one that you have your heart set on, I would also recommend that you get a PPI or a pre-purchase inspection. And that's usually done by an experienced Pantera shop. It will be the best 200 bucks you spend on the car. So now, let's jump right into it. So the first thing you want to look for is corrosion. Rust is a problem with many Italian cars. The manufacturing process didn't really look into rust prevention, and that's no exception with the Pantera. So when you look at one of these, you want to make sure that you look at the frame rails for signs of rust. You want to look at the left quarter panel, that's another issue, where a lot of water concentrates in between the sheets of metal and starts to rust. I've actually heard of a lot of guys use a vacuum with a hose to suck water accumulation from that area. So you always definitely want to look at that. Another area to look for, it's right up front on the lower valance of the car. You tend to get a lot of water accumulation damage from driving and, and that type of stuff. So you want to make sure that you look at that area as well. Other than that, what a machine this car is. I hope this video has helped you learn more about Panteras. And if you're in the market for one, hopefully this information can help you find your dream Pantera. Make sure to leave your comments below. If you like this video, give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos. I shouldn't have to tell you what car this is. So, the Pantera. Is it Italian? Is it American? Is it Argentinian? It's kind of confusing. And I think that's part of the reason the Pantera, it's the... Should I just keep going? D9, take one. Get back out and do that again. Chuck wasn't out of frame yet. Okay. <laughs>